What's up? It's Kathy. I'm back with another process video. This one is for paper issues. And this is my second part of my Christmas in July um, blog posts that I'm doing. And so for this one, I went really Christmassy. The other one was more uh, like a winter theme. And this one is completely Christmas themed. And I had purchased a whole bunch of the Chamel products uh, from her older Christmas line. And I'd say older in the sense that she hasn't had a Christmas line since, um, but this was her line. And it came out a little while ago, but I purchased it all from the Paper Issue store when I thought I was going to make a December daily. So that was back before, like, last Christmas. And I think some of it is still available in the shop even now. And I really liked it. It was very vintage. There was even some inspiration that looked like it was from that old uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer um, Claymate stop motion animation. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, sorry, don't mean to cough. Anyway, so I was deciding what papers I wanted to use. I printed this larger black and white photo and it's just all the kids tearing open <laughs> their presents on Christmas morning and it was like the only photo I had that wasn't completely horrible and I don't mind if they're a little bit blurry or anything like that because it's kind of the, the idea of the day but um, they need to be at least somewhat functional as a photo. So I have this one and I put it in black and white just so that I didn't have to worry about competing colors because there would have been a ton of colors in this. So that just helped, you know, make it a little bit easier uh, on the eye, especially since I was using a very busy background. And I had a little, you know, I wasn't sure which background I wanted to use because I really loved some of the other uh, papers from the line, but there was just, I don't know, there was just something about this paper that when I put this photo on this paper, I loved it. <clears throat> so I decided I had to use it. Now because it's so busy, I did not want a, a whole lot of layers in the background uh, or anything like that. So I grabbed some of the houndstooth, uh, uh, what is it called? Tissue paper that the Paper Issues packages comes packed in because I just had it kind of kicking around. Uh, from some previous happy mail and I loved crinkling it up and making it look like it was just a piece of wrapping paper and I I know that the that the dark circles in this paper are wood grain so there really isn't any actual black in the in the Chamel products but because it was such a little amount uh, like I don't myself I try not to really combine black and brown all that much. I don't know. I, I just don't like it competing. But <clears throat> in this case, because it was so little of each color, I didn't really find that it was that big of a deal. Um, it, some of the ephemera had these pieces where you could fold them and it gave them dimension. And the Merry Christmas was one of those. And I just thought about using it because it was cute and then easy title. It's It's done and... I could pop it up and all that kind of stuff so I grabbed some of the other ephemera pieces. Now I think I only have like the ephemera and a few other things from this collection. I didn't buy all the papers or anything like that. Just enough of it. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> you can see I kind of covered the Christmas part of Merry Christmas and I will move that um, because I don't notice at the time that I've done it. But uh, yeah, no, I'm just kind of, I grabbed some of the ephemera and I knew kind of what I wanted to go with. So now I'm just adjusting it to to kind of look the way I want. I mean, I'm not doing anything crazy where I'm doing strips of paper or anything like that. This is kind of like that basic, basic layout. It's just a piece of paper <laughs> and ephemera and the photo. And I don't, like, it, it doesn't really get much much more basic than that I find you know like that's there's nothing technique wise going on with this it's just all using the ephemera and using a background paper but uh, <clears throat> I really actually like how it turned out in the end and I am going to shove a bit more because I was losing so much of the the hound's tooth just because of uh, of all the ephemera being around the photo so I just thought I'd glue in a little bit more just so you could see it. And in the end, I kind of wish I had even uh, put more kind of going around, but I didn't. 
Um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't, uh, this is one of those voiceovers where I don't really have a whole lot to say about it because, um, sorry about the lighting, uh, change. It just, just kind of different times in the day, but I don't, uh, I didn't think it, this one, I didn't have to think this one out a whole lot. I do decide in the end to bring in this older Pink Fresh Studio uh, Christmas Christmas collection. <clears throat> Sorry, some of the ephemera that I have, and that was mostly just because there was teal in the chamel, and I liked the idea of bringing in some more teal. And then the background paper is it wasn't like a off white, but the ephemera for chamel was. So I kind of wanted to counterbalance that with a little bit uh, white ephemera, and then there was red in in the Pink Fresh Studio stuff too. So I just thought it was kind of a great little way to to combine these two um, collections. And I mean, there's green for the tree and all that kind of stuff. So it all kind of kind of brings in together. And I do like that little uh, deer up there, and I am going to glue him down. But first, these stars actually came in the June swag bag from Paper Issues and I just had them laying around because I hadn't used all of it yet <clears throat> and it was just kind of laying on my desk and I thought well the foil accents for the Chamel line were silver and I have these cute little silver stars so why not put them in I love wooden buttons and Chamel always has wooden buttons I find and some of the other collections do too but I always love hers and because they're not like I like I love flare but I can't use it because it tends to rust um, I know there's a lot of other people that have had the same issues uh, that I've talked to that that their flare rusts and I guess it's just I don't know the conditions of where we live maybe <clears throat> it uh, works better in some places than others but wooden buttons are great. I, I like that they're, you know, because they're wooden, they don't have, you could use them with gold or silver or rose gold because they don't have a metal um, uh, border like a brad would. And they're not brads, so I don't have to worry about poking holes in my paper to, to figure out where to put them, which is nice. And yeah, no, I just think they, I just thought they were adorable. But uh, besides that, and I think some Heidi Swap, I am going to put a border paper around this because I'm looking at it and it's always this way with me. Because when I make a layout like this and it is very, <clears throat> it's busy, but it's simplistic in a way because, you know, I'm not doing a lot of techniques as I mentioned. And because of that, I go, oh, it just kind of looks like it's falling off the page or something. Like it needs grounding and that's usually when I decide to put a border on is when I feel like my my layout needs to be grounded so and, and sent to its room and put on a timeout but oh bad jokes I'm like telling dad jokes now anyway so I'm just trying to figure out what I want to do and I was like oh I better not bring in another busy paper right like I better bring in oh no no now I'm gonna bring in a busy paper I'm gonna bring in that green plaid I know. You're probably there. I know there are some of you out there that watch me and, uh, you know, you can appreciate me mixing uh, patterns, but I know there's some of you out there that are probably want to smack me right now because they're like, no, no, no. Like you cannot combine these two crazy busy papers. The thing is because I'm combining such a small amount, I found it worked. I liked it the best out of all the choices that I was going through and I am going to do some, uh, just some doodling around the, <clears throat> the edge of the circle paper to, in black, just to separate it and just kind of give you that look. And then I always do a little bit of the folding, like the, um, kind of roughing up the edges too. I find that does help when you're doing this type of thing. And as you can see, I cut out the middle cause I did like this paper. So I do, did want to keep some of it. Um, but I actually really like how it turned out with the busy paper on busy paper. It's such a busy layout, but you really do notice the photo because it's in black and white. And it's very, 
stark and there's a lot of contrast so it pushes against all these colors and just kind of helps it stand out as far as I'm concerned. So and I love that little doll, the little Island of Misfit Toys doll. Um, <laughs> she's so cute. I can't remember why she was a misfit toy. No, I don't remember why she was a misfit toy in that movie. But anyway, <laughs> I mean, that's that's obviously what she is. But uh, yeah. No, I'm really happy with how this layout turned out. And it was really nice to get in and scrapbook photos that I often forget to do in other months other than December. So pictures are coming up. I am going to put Heidi Swap Tinsel, I believe, on there. And um, so thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Hope you guys get some, you know, scrappy Christmas fun stuff done in July. So uh, later days. Bye.